Andy Bus here. My main man, Greg Mangus, one of the greatest anglers ever to come out of the state of Indiana. Also, the first guest on the Hunter and Fish Bass with Bus episode, see the link to that on the description, has proposed that tournaments, bass fishing terms that is, in Michigan and Indiana, ban the weighing of smallmouth bass around the spawn. Now, I run the RB Bass Circuit, biggest and baddest and best bass circuit in states of Indiana and Michigan. Why well, you got my attention. He also got Louis Stout's attention, senior editor of Bassmaster Magazine, who's writing about it, putting it all over his website. And the movement, I'm gonna call it a movement, it's gaining momentum. So, I'm driving to the, his house right now. I wanna sit down and chat with him. See what he has to say. Tune in. All right, Greg. What you talking about, Wills? What's that? <laughs> all right, <laughs> so. Your proposal here, or what you're trying to get across, or the idea here. I'm like, well, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Jeez. Hey, Andy. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about some of the, our smallmouth fisheries in northern Indiana, southern Michigan. I've been fishing a lot of these lakes, tournament fishing as well, for probably 35 years. And uh, I've noticed that most of our lakes are primarily largemouth lakes, but some of them had really good populations of smallmouth as well. And I'm concerned a little bit because lakes, for example, like James, we don't have the population we used to have or the size that we used to have. Uh, Diamond Lakes, probably in that category, Lake Wallasee, a few different lakes. And there's also at least one lake around here that's gotten better for smallies. And I'm not a scientist, obviously. My thoughts are basically based on my personal observations through the years. Uh, a lot of those lakes, you could win tournaments with 17, 18 pounds of smallies. And most of those lakes, you can't do that anymore. So, what I'm thinking is that I'd like to see these lakes come back. Now, I don't know if it's an environmental thing, but I don't think it helps the lakes to have tournaments during the spawn, especially if that's what's majorly getting targeted. <clears throat> so I would, you know, I'm, I'm suggesting to some tournament organizations that they, um, on certain lakes, of course, that they either make them largemouth tournaments during that period or, you know, just avoid the lake in general. But not for largemouth. Yeah. Why right. not? Well, I, personally, I don't really see that spawning for largemouth has made a, a big difference. I mean, I'm sure... A lot of the lakes get a lot of pressure, which might have made some difference, but I don't think it's because of fishermen um, targeting spawning largemouth. They're just harder, um, harder to catch. There's more areas probably where people don't even find them. Now, yeah, you're talking fishing experience, 35 plus years for yourself. Yes. And so you are observing this through yourself. You said you're not a scientist. Now you say 17 pounds of smallmouth, five fish limit, for those who don't term it fish, be five fish limit. And today, um, do you ever see that on these lakes that you've mentioned? And you've mentioned Diamond Lake Asopolis and Lake James Angola, and you've mentioned Lake Wallace Sea out of Syracuse. Do you ever see a big sack of smallmouth anymore? Rarely, not compared to what it used to be. And even from my personal observations, I don't see as many beds in the areas that they used to bed and the size of the fish on the beds, which tells me, obviously, it's the adult fish that spawned. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's a lot more fish in the 13-inch size limit spawning, mm -hmm. or not size limit, but size, Do you that think are spawning now. And... You know, historically, those would be pound, uh, three pound fish or bigger. Now, what you're asking for is for tournaments, tournament trails, 
such as the R&B Bastard or others, to prohibit or ban the weighing of smallmouth, specifically during the spawn, around the spawn, a time frame? Uh, I'm trying to, you know, I'd like to see these lakes come back. And one of the ways I think we can help is to voluntarily, uh, when we have a tournament, if it's during the time period when the smallies are spawning, to make it a largemouth tournament only, or even an organization can avoid those lakes, say, during the month of May. Mm -hmm. now, one, one organization is, what they plan to do is just say that you can't weigh a smallmouth during the month of May, which, um, which pretty much would cover the time frame that that organization the lakes that they fish. You name one organization. Much. Have you had others jump in and jump in on those yet? Yeah, I've had two organizations so far that that are for sure doing it. They're either, like I said, not allowing smallmouth to be weighed in in the month of May, mm -hmm. and another one you just uh, if they would go to a lake that's a smallmouth lake or has smallmouth, they're making it a largemouth tournament only. Now, the decline in the smallmouth population and size of smallmouth, do you put some of that blame on the pressure from tournaments now? I don't know, but I suspect that one, one lake I observed, there was 13 tournaments in one week, well, one weekend a weekend, in 13 tournaments. In so a nine-day span, essentially. Yeah, when they were spawning, and most most anglers were targeting smallmouth. Mm -hmm. And the next few years, my observation was it wasn't anything like it was prior to that. So I am I would guess that when you have that kind of pressure when they're spawning, it definitely has an effect. The What I've heard numerous occasions is that there are studies out there to indicate that targeting betting largemouth does not have a big impact on its population. That's why I hear it got brought back to me. Is it different though for smallmouth? Well, some, some research I've read suggests that. For the smallmouth, it does have a negative impact. Yeah. Are there habits on the spawn beds? Is, is it different than a largemouth? Well, obviously, I think all of us that are bass fishermen know that smallies are a lot more aggressive especially when they're on the beds also they're more concentrated it's a time when they're easier to find uh, they're generally in shallower water uh, and they're in open areas where unlike a largemouth that might be spawning under a dock where you wouldn't even see him um, or whatever but th their habitat is much different, plus they're more aggressive than largemouth. So, smallmouth, or let's talk about uh, the impact tournament fishing, tournament fishing has had on these, on the smallmouth populations in our area, northern Indiana, southern Michigan. That can't be the only impact. Uh, I'll bring something up to you. What about the impact of weed kills, or the management of lakes in itself? Would well, you agree that has an impact on, well, let's say, not just smallmouth, but all species of fish? Oh, yeah, sure. And that's a separate sure issue. Does. And, and I'm not blaming tournament fishermen on mm -hmm. the decline, but I, I think that tournaments during the spawn, and especially when you have a lot of them on one given lake during that period, it's definitely got to affect them. And, you know, Again, can't say 100% what the reason for the decline is, but I would think that that um, big tournaments during the spawn definitely probably has an effect on smallies much more than a largemouth, I think, and that's just from a personal observation. It's not scientific. Sure, I get and, it. Well, you and the other thing, you know, I'm not suggesting not having tournaments during the spawn. I mean, I'm not, I'm not someone who says I don't think you should catch smallies off a of bed. I like catching them. I've won a lot of tournaments. 
fishing for them on beds. And uh, I don't want a closed season. Hmm. No, um, you don't want a closed season. So no. let's get us out. Are you at all in favor or have you tried to get legislation? The idea that any kind of law changes, are you communicating with the DNR, um, senators, congressmen, women, whatever? I mean, are you doing anything at all to change fishing regulations in either Indiana or Michigan? No. Nothing? No. Okay, so we heard I mean, that I, and got that out of the way. And I don't, I don't have a problem with anybody that catches a smallie off a bed. I don't have a problem if, if you have a tournament and it's in and it's a, it, it's okay to catch them in that tournament when they're spawning uh, i have nothing against anybody that does so you're in not fact, looking in fact it might be me hmm. but i think my main concern is trying to um, get the smalling population back Sure. If, if it's possible. I mean, maybe it's all environmental. Well, that was going to be my next question is we talk about different environmental factors. Rather, we're talking about shoreline encroachment or uh, development along the shoreline or weed kills in particular get brought up over and over. Do you think it's even possible to have a comeback like it was 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago when we talk about 17, 18 pound sacks of fish in Indiana? Well, I, you know, since I moved to, to Fremont, I fish Clear Lake a lot. And... For 20 some years I've lived here and I get a really good picture of what the smallmouth population is like late in the fall, in other words post turnover and at ice out because the smallies winter in certain places unclear. And I can tell... You say clear lake. That correct? Yeah, okay. and clear lake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I can see through the years the changes in the numbers of fish wintering in these different areas. And generally speaking, they've all, for the 21 years I've lived here, they have wintered in the same places and there's generally pretty good concentrations of them there. Now, you know, for example, when uh, when there was all that tournament pressure one spring, and that was unclear, from that, the two falls before that, I was catching five fish limits of smallies late that would weigh over 20 pounds all the time. Mm. Ever since that spring, when there were so many tournaments, during the spawn, I don't come close to that. Now, Clear Lake is a, a small body of water. Approximately how many acres is Clear? I think it's 800 and some acres. 800 acres. And you look across the country, and that's a small body of water. It is not necessarily small in northeast Indiana. Do you think the size of lakes in our area make our smallmouth extra sensitive to the pressure. And, and I guess we should understand too and bring out for those of us who don't tournament fish is that what, what Greg's talking about is that when a fish is caught during a tournament, he's really not against that. He's not against catching a smallmouth at all. It's then taking it away from its bed, putting it in the live well for anywhere between one and eight hours before being driven back to a boat ramp where it is taken back out put in without water in a weigh bag, wrapped up and weighed to see how much it weighs, before being released back into the lake at a completely different destination. But with that said, our size of lakes only support so many smallmouth, so many walleye and bass and largemouth and pike. So is that is that a concern? I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is this Well the, generally the lakes that I'm that I've observed that seemed uh, the population has gone way down. Those aren't big lakes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have no idea. Uh, and, the, and the other thing, these lakes aren't like the lakes up in Grand Traverse area. They're, for one, a lot smaller, and the environment's totally different. These lakes are more mesotrophic or fertile, more fertile than the lakes up north. Mm -hmm. And the environment is not as good for smallies, but the lakes that I've mentioned 
were better lakes. I mean, some lakes are obviously most of our lakes around here. I would say the majority don't even have any small lakes. But I guess you look at Lake St. Clair, which is close to you, two hours away maybe. I spent a lot of time at Lake Champlain. That's 200, and, I don't know, 12,000 acres, and Lake St. Clair is enormous as well. Do you think this is a concern for those bodies of water as well, or do you think, or is your focus, if you lived around St. Clair or Champlain or Mill Axe or something like that, do you think this is a concern for those lakes as well? You know. Because they are getting hammered during the spawn time. Every year, Father's Day weekend, Lake St. Clair opens up on the Michigan side, and it gets hammered. You know, I don't know for sure, but um, I don't fish over there as much as I used to. But you do hear big weights all the time over there. So, and it, but it does cycle there, and who knows what the reason for that is. And it's, you know, a few years ago, it was tough to catch a smallie over three and a half pounds in St. Clair. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, when I used to fish Tri-State, four-pounders were common. That's what you won with. So it, um, then you had a, a time frame there where that changed, and I don't know what happened to those big fish. But obviously right now there's a lot of big fish there. So. Yeah, yeah, 2018 is a pretty remarkable year for, for St. Clair. But ultimately your focus is not even... Those bodies of water. No, it's, I'm just I'm concerned about the lakes around here that have changed. Mm -hmm. So what you're proposing, Greg, is is not any kind of legislation change. You got a change in asking for a banning of catching smallmouth off the beds or any fish off the beds. You're not proposing a restriction of any of our resources on outdoorsmen in any way, shape, or form. You are simply just asking for fishmen, not any fishmen tournament directors and tournament anglers to preserve their resources better and specifically to smallmouth bass. Is that right? Yeah, basically on on these, you know, smaller lakes that have been pressured a lot and we've seen the smallmouth population go down. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it hurts the population at all to catch them any other time of the year, but I'm concerned that when you have, a, especially when you have a, a lot of tournaments during the spawn on a particular lake, um, yeah, and truthfully, I'd like to hear from some of the guys that, you know, that traditionally have targeted smallies on beds that are really good smallie fishermen that fish those lakes. And sure. I'd like to hear their thoughts, why they, what they think is part of the problem, why are, you know, why the population in those lakes have gone down. It's not that, you know, and it's not something I want to argue with people about that. I'm not against anybody fishing for smallies on yeah. beds. I just... And maybe that's a misconception, is, is that you're not aggressively going after anybody. You're not aggressively asking for change, you're just asking people to consider their impact on our smallmouth bass fisheries and to maybe use better judgment, which is you know, body of water that doesn't necessarily have a bunch, to protect them more. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. If, I, if tell me can, if I'm putting raw words in your mouth. No, I would say... Specifically, that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in protecting what smallies we do have around here. Um, and maybe even making it better again. Now, let me say, as the creator of the RME Bass Circuit, we have not endorsed his idea yet. I say yet because we might. But I can tell you, since our schedule came out in November 2018, we won't through, through 2019. But it's something that the tournament directors have been, shall I say, very passionately been discussing for May potentially in 2020. Now, Greg, I got a question um, off of my Facebook page. I posted on Facebook. If you don't follow me on Facebook, you should, for questions for Greg Mangus. So people who uh, followed me last night learned we're going to have this interview. And, and this question is from John DuPont. And the question is, have you ever met a more charismatic person than Andy Buss? <laughs> well, 
Well, I've met a lot of people, so <laughs> that's an easy one. No, John, no, and John's got a real man crush on me, and that's okay. Uh, I thank you for your time and explain this further. Louis Stout's article has gotten a lot of attention. I know it has because I've been contacted by, by countless people, rather the members of the Army Bass Circuit, or just anglers who follow me on, on rather YouTube here, or social media, and it's gotten a lot of interest and a lot of passionate uh, opinions on that, so I appreciate you elaborating that further. Give you a chance to, to say anything else if I've failed to ask the right question. No, but I'd like to say if, if you are a tournament director, and uh, I would hope that you'd talk it over with your, your competitors and see how they feel and see if we can't um, do something about it. Maybe we can make our small fishing better. And, uh... and I would say if you're passionate one way or another, you can make comments right below. And, of course, those comments can stay there forever. And, of course, this topic's probably going to run from Indiana to Michigan and other states in the Midwest and who knows, maybe, maybe across the country, and your comments are going to be read there. So I'd encourage you to put your comments down there. Start some dialogue. Be respectful. Please be respectful. And we would appreciate those comments. Yeah, and any questions that come to Andy specifically for me, I don't. I'm not on Facebook. I'd be happy to answer any questions through Andy or, or Andy's. Facebook's Facebook. not necessarily for Greg's uh, generation, but but that's okay. I'm real high tech. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that beauty, huh? I think that's your lemonade color. Is that right? On the sea sour, flash cranks. Sour cream. Sour cream. Well, lemonade, sour cream. I mean, baked potato beverage. Now, I know that. That's your Magnum 44 bluegill color scheme. So, pretty famous there. Greg, thank you very much thank for you, your Andy. time. Thank you for fo uh, following along. Hit that subscribe button and then hit the notifications button too. That way, next time a video comes up, you'll get notified for it. I have a class with my mouth. Man.